everyone welcome to my channel if you're new here my name is Debbie this is my crafty Dan and I am going to craft up a few little things for fall so I'm looking for a few more items um, not sure what I'm gonna do exactly but of course I kind of have a plan like I usually do so I'm gonna start by using the square from one of these packets I got these I got the rounds and the squares both six pieces for four dollars crafts brand from Dollarama and I got them in the summer when they first came out so I've got this one what I've realized since I got these I have stencils and most of my stencils are the size of a 12 inch tile so when you look at these stencils these are going to fit onto these boards perfectly absolutely perfect I mean look at this they couldn't have been made for them any better so I want to do this one that says you are my sunshine and I am going to start by painting the whole thing with this blue stone house chalky patina the industrial country paint I'm thinking that the color is linen I'm just going to set that over there and I'm going to start painting this So I have my board painted all the way around with this beautiful linen color and I love it for a base coat because it's not white. I love it. Anyway, and it's especially nice for the fall. So I have stencils. I have both of these stencils. One says Farm Fresh Pumpkins and has a truck and some pumpkins on it. And the other one says, you are my sunshine with a butterfly and a sunflower. And I was in the store doing my groceries yesterday and they had beautiful big bouquets of sunflowers in some of the most luscious colors too. And yeah, so I'm gonna make this a double-sided sign. And something that I don't do with my signs is put holes or put hangers on them. So I'm going to start with this. And because it's actually larger than my board, I'm going to just hold this while I stencil it. I am going to start with this vintage mustard yellow and it is a chalk paint from home decor from folk art i'm just going to stipple this on where the petals are okay i've got that nice vintage mustard i love that color for fall so i am going to add cinnamon brown just to that so I can rub my brush right into this work it right into the bristles so I have my sunflower from the stencil but I want to paint this just a quick little dry now this on here and then I'm going to stencil the you are my sunshine on here in black okay so I have that part done and before I take the stencil off I'm going to put a little bit of this down, just a drop. This is burnt umber. There's not much left in here. And I'm going to add that to the yellow and work it in really, really well. And 
And then I am going to take this all off and that's what that did to my flower so by coloring all the yellow in and then just adding a little bit of brown to it and going over it, the stencil again I got that really pretty shading around the edges of my petals and it defines the flowers just a little bit more so that's what it looks like so far. Now that this is um, traced onto here, stenciled, I'm going to attempt to paint this. So I have some black paint. I think I'm gonna do the lettering first and then attempt the truck, I think. So I'm gonna start with my black paint. And I think I do, my pants are starting to thicken up, so I'm just gonna hit this with a little spray so that I can water this paint down a little bit because I think it'll be much easier to paint with if it's thin. treat this like a paint by numbers I am going to do one color and let it dry then do the next color and let it dry so that I don't have it completely ruined by going back and forth all over it okay so this is painted and I kind of like the whole hand painted look of this so tell me what you think so what I did was I painted the pumpkin, um, pumpkins, and I put a little bit of brown in with the orange and painted them with a the muted orange. And then I went back with the straight pumpkin orange, and it was just an apple barrel pumpkin orange. And I put a little bit of the brighter color over top with the red I did it the exact opposite the red on the truck I painted the whole truck red but I could still see my pencil lines through which was perfect because then I went back and I painted with red with a tiny tiny drop of black in it to give it this darker color the the silver on the front and back bumpers on the trim piece at the top of the box on the truck and on the handlebars and on the hubcaps. I used this deco art and it was silver morning metallic paint and I added the tiniest drop of black to it and I ended up with this kind of pewter color which I think worked perfect on that they're not quite dry yet so they're actually still a little bit shiny uh, a little bit of light you know the the yellow for light where the um, windows are and not that there would be light I mean sometimes that would be black I, who knows I just wanted it to look brighter 
the leaves were painted with the same color as the um, the base of the pumpkins orange with a little bit of a darker color blended in and of course just the black the only thing i didn't paint with the brush was the open daily and i just used a permanent marker for that so there's that on that side and then when you turn it over it says you are my sunshine so to finish these off i'm going to take a fan brush a tiny little bit of black paint on here just a little bit and I am going to use the end of this brush and I'm going to blend it in I'm just going to rub that right in to my paper towel because I don't want like paint on the this paintbrush I just want the tiniest little bit and by doing it with the fan brush so what I'm thinking is I'm just going to go around the edges like this and just fan this black in. There. I don't want a lot. So I've got it on there. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And this is going to be done. And it's a double sided picture. So that's the end of project number one. Project number two. These came from Value Village when I hauled all those, I'm going to call them grab bags. That's when you shop that whole wall of plastic bags. And I did that and I've given these a coat of paint. You can very lightly see the background on these, but I'm going to stencil these. So in that package of stencils, I got these two little stencils. And one says Happy Thanksgiving and has a little bit of decor around it. And the other one just says Gobble Gobble and has a little turkey on it. And I'm going to put these on these little blocks. It's going to work that paint right up into the brush. This is such a delicate, tiny little stencil that I don't even know if it's going to work on here. So let me show you the stencils that I've been using. So this was an Amazon purchase. Um, I can't remember exactly what I paid for it, but I will put the link in the description box because I just got this. And the reason that I got it was because it has multiple stencils. The These stencils are like 12 inches square. And then this one here, you can do, it's a longer one. This is a longer one, not quite 12 inches high, but they're beautiful. And it says, welcome to our home. The Farm Fresh Pumpkins one that I used, hello fall, um, thankful and blessed. You are my sunshine, home sweet home, happy Halloween one. And then this one is just separate images. There's a gnome, an owl, some acorns, and some different types of leaves. And then these two little happy Thanksgiving and gobble gobble. So with these, I'll leave a link in the description box below for that. So with these little ones, I am going to plug in my glue gun. My hot glue gun is getting warm. This is my Sure Bonder with the big sticks. And this will hold, and it'll hold, it'll hold a lot. But I'm just going to use one of the blocks and put it on the back side of this so that these are little stands. They'll stand up in my um, tiered tray. Now, I put this on the back, and it's slightly higher than the bottom edge. I didn't line it up with the bottom edge at all, 
because when I put it on my tiered tray, it's going to lean back ever so slightly. Not much at all, but just a little bit. There, so I'm gonna call those two done. Those two little bits are going to be cute sitting in my tiered tray. For my next project, I am going to turn these corks into a pumpkin. And I've seen lots of people do this. This is not my idea, but at Value Village, I shopped the wall where they do the little, all the little grab bags for $2.99 and $3.99. And for $2.99, I got two fairly good sized packages of corks that are nicely all the same, which means the front and the back of this are gonna be even without having to cut any corks. Now I've just used this to hold them together so that I could count them out and see how many needed. Now, I've poured some of this uh, pumpkin orange acrylic paint into a nice big measuring cup because I wanted something really big and I am going to water this down a lot. So I'm just going to stir this paint right into that water. Now I don't know if that's going to be enough. I'm going to add a little bit more. I mean I can just wash the extra down the drain. So I'm going to give it another squirt and add a little bit more water. I want enough to be able to put all of these corks in here and just toss it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to dump these in and then I'm going to toss them around and stir them so they can get nicely coated with this. I don't want these to be opaque. I just want them to be a little bit orange. And I think this will work nicely. So I'm going to stir them around in here for a while so that they can soak up some of this paint water. So now I'm just going to pick these out and set them on here to dry. Okay, so my corks are dry. Now what I really like about using a watered down version of paint instead of painting them is that you can still tell these are corks and I want them to be noticeable as corks. So I'm gonna glue this one to this one. I'm just looking for the darker end to put up because this will be my front. So I think I had four on the bottom row, like this. Make sure I'm not gluing them to my box. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to make sure that these are flat on the bottom so that this pumpkin is gonna stand up nicely when it's done. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put two little beads of glue side by side on it and then I'm going to put it into here so that those two beads of glue hit both of these corks. So that'll glue it in really well. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. So there's my pumpkin. Let's get a few of these off. And I want to put something around it before I put this on the top. So I haven't painted this yet. I should do that, but I'm just gonna give it a little bit of brown paint. So I've got this decorative cord or rope 
it's the crafts brand and I've got it in this orange and I've got it in this lovely gold yellow fall beautiful color I'm gonna put them together I'm gonna leave a nice bit and I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna wrap around a couple of times and then make sure I leave a nice bit and I am going to cut this and then set these two aside. I'm going to have to re-roll them here in a minute, I think. Now I'm going to take this back off because I've got my lengths. And I'm going to take the bottom of this and I am going to run just a couple of dots of glue down the bottom. So leaving a nice long bit so that I have some to wrap around the top. I am going to start here and I'm going to wrap it. And then I'm going to go all the way around the top. And I'm going to go through that glue again and make sure that that's being held down really well. And then I am going to tie this at the top. Good and tight. There, so I've got that, that's all I want. That might not sit flat. Now I may have to do something else because I've done this and I've made that into a rocky edge. But, oh my gosh, I'm sticking to everything, guys. I'm going to move this up a little bit, I think. I got to put a little bit of brown paint on this. There, I've got a nice tight knot. I'm going to hold my string to the front a little bit so that I can put my cork on here and glue it a little bit flush with the back. Let's hold that down. My glue gun's getting really hot, so it's going to take a minute for my hot glue to dry. This is not a low temp. It's a high temp, and by high temp, I mean that is still not dry yet, guys. So this is a really high temp glue gun, but it's great for projects like this. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right down in there. It'll soak down in. And then hold that a little bit better. So what I'm going to do to be able to make this stand up again, while that's drying, I'm just going to let that sit there a minute. I'm going to take a couple more of these Jenga blocks and I'm going to glue one on the bottom here and one on the bottom there on each side of that ribbon so that this has a way to stand flat without falling over. There. That's better. And now I can tie, make sure I've got the front, and now I can tie a bow out of this. And I'm just going to do a simple shoelace tie here, like that. get it the way that I want it and then I'm going to trim up just the excess on that side and that's what it looks like so I might paint this down here brown I have a little bit of brown on my paintbrush 
and ooh, that's not good. You shouldn't allow your glue gun <laughs> to drip on top of your paintbrush. It's not good for your paintbrush. So just so that that hides that bottom a little bit better. And my tiered tray has a lip all the way around. This will just allow this to sit up a little wee bit on the tray so that it'll show more, which is always nice. Just brushing what little bit of paint that I have left over here on the inside of those so they won't show as much. So that's what I have. So that will be really pretty on my tiered tray. And then I have one more thing that I want to do. So let me clean this all okay, the off. The last thing that I have, and this is an up cycle for me. So I have an embroidery hoop. I bought um, 10 or 12 embroidery hoops this size. I think they're eight inches. They're not that big. I bought them because I thought they'd be handy for small little wreaths. But I haven't used a ton of them. And I'm going to use one to upcycle this kitchen towel. So I have this kitchen towel. There's a little bit of a stain on it right here. But that's not in the print. This is not absorbent. It was part of a set. And I use the other one all the time. But this decorative one... I mean, it's all white. It's really not my thing. There's nothing about this as a dishcloth that I like. I do love this, though. So what I'm going to do is take this print, and I am going to try to line the dish towel into the embroidery hoop so that I can get this. Oh, I got a little hair there so that I can get this on here because I do want to save this little print. I think it's really, really cute. So I've got that the way I want. It says grateful hearts gather here. And I'm going to push this on here. And as I push this down, it should stretch this really tight, which is the idea. And then all I have to do is tighten this. You have to hold the little nut and tighten the little screw in. That's pretty good. And then all I have to do is go around the outside and trim this off. So easy and simple. Just, just almost too easy. It's almost not even a DIY. Okay, guys, yeah, I'm going to add some of this twine that I put on my pumpkin on here. Not much. I'm just going to use a little bit, maybe 12 inches of it. I'm just going to cut both, and I'm going to use it to kind of hide this a little bit. So where's my metal? I'm going to wrap around the back, back to the front, and then tie a bow. Just like that, I, th I think that's better. Not much of a decoration on this, I don't need any. So here is that lovely sunflower sign. I think this turned out so pretty. And when you flip it over on the other side, you have the farm fresh pumpkins open daily, beautiful red truck. I love that I hand painted this. And then those two little stand-up signs that I made from those little wood pieces that I found at Value Village. They're so cute. And 
oh my gosh, the cork pumpkin. That is my favorite piece. Absolutely. I love the way it looks on here. And then I also love that I have this little sign behind my coffee bar under my mugs. And it says, thankful hearts gather here. So if you want to see a full reveal of my coffee bar when I get it completely done for fall, don't forget to subscribe so that you can come back. And I will see everybody in the next video. Bye bye for now, everyone.